Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now I've been thinking it's about time we start a new series. We still got three active series going on. We've got the Great Smoky Mountain series, we've got Mike Vala streamers, and we've got the Ringneck Pheasant series. But we just finished the Dave Hughes Essential Trout Flies, and then a series on soft hackles. So I think we got room for one more. Now what would you think about old school winged wet flies? And why I thought of this series today was, I just got this book in the mail. David Klausmeyer, you might know him as editor of Fly Tire Magazine. He put this book, Favorite Flies, came out in April of this year, 2020. I just got my copy today. This thing is amazing. I'll do a review of it here in the next couple of weeks, but when I just opened it up, flipped to it, the first page I came to was Watson's Fancy. And I just saw this fly and said, this is beautiful. I've got to tie this and I want to do it tonight. Now, what do we know about this pattern? Not a whole lot other than it was an English pattern actually created in Scotland, first tied by a guy named Donald Watson of Inverness. And I couldn't really find out what year it was created. I'm guessing the late 1800s because it did show up in Ray Bergman's Trout. You see the book on the shelf back there behind me. And that's pretty much the Bible for classic winged wet fly tires. Now the British version did have a different tail. It used a golden pheasant crest for the tail and the Americanized version has golden pheasant tippets and Ray Bergman's pattern had a smooth floss body instead of a beaver body. And I'm gonna be tying the American version tonight. I think it's just a really cooler pattern. It's very elegant, a beautiful fly. Now, one note for new fly tires out there, if you try any of these winged wet flies, don't get discouraged if they don't come out perfect. I mean, these are pretty hard flies to tie. They take a little bit of practice, and if you don't get them right, just keep tying, keep practicing. I'm sure what you come up with will fish. Now, one other note before we get into tonight's tie, it's Mike Nay's birthday. Now, Mike has been a big supporter of this channel since really early on. So wouldn't it be great if you could leave a comment in there saying happy birthday to Mike. And I say happy birthday, Mike. Thank you for all the support these many months. So let's get into today's fly, the Watson's Fancy. So there it is in the vise. And you can tell under those wings that it's a two color body. You got the red at the back and the black at the front. I'm gonna tie this on a size 10. It's a 1x long wet fly hook. Now I'm going to be using a black, this is a 12 aught thread. You could use an 8 aught or 70 denier, but this is a pretty delicate fly, so I like the thinner stuff for these. And just lay your base all the way down to the start of the bend. Now the first component we'll tie in is the tail. And the tail of this is golden pheasant tippets. What you'll want to do, I don't know if you can see in the camera, you got the big long feathers at the bottom, but you want a medium to short feather, even on this size 10, so the, the black bars will be closer together. So I've got one pulled out right here, and the trick for doing this is, okay, grab the tips, and then take your scissors in here, and just poke it in at about eight of them, and snip it off. Let's see, okay. Now just pull this feather out, but don't let go of this piece right here. And if you did it right, your black bars will be lined up still. And for the most part, these are, so get your length. I think that's gonna be it right there. It's a kind of a long tail, but not terribly long. So I'll do two pinch wraps right here, and then check it. Okay, that's the length I want. And I wish this feather was a little bit longer. I'm putting loose wraps right here. If the feather was a little bit longer, I would have preferred those stems to be to go all the way up to the front so that you just don't, you know, it would help keep the body even. But that's fine. We can live with this. We might just have to, you know, compensate with some of our floss wraps. So the next component to tie in is a small mylar tinsel. I'm using a Danville in size 16 and 18. I'm gonna catch it in with the gold side toward the hook, because the gold is what we want showing. So I'm gonna just catch it in with two wraps. Well, maybe go one more forward with three. Now we're gonna catch in our red. 
The red floss is the back of the fly. So if it's spreading out on you like that, just lick your fingers and pull it through. Now you've got them stuck together. Just catch in the slightest bit right there at the tip. Or if you have to, catch it in and then pull forward or pull back. So try to be economical with your thread wraps. The, the fewer you can do, the smoother you'll keep this body. Now, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but I've got one little fiber right there that, you know, probably won't get in the way, but could make it a little messier. So let's take our thread back up to the halfway point, half of the body, maybe just a little forward. I think that's fine right there. Now let's wrap this this red floss. The first wrap, first one or two are the most important, but don't let it get too bulky on you yet. Let me show you some tricks here. Okay, you see that thread is starting to spread out on me? That's good for getting it to lay flat, but if it spreads out too much on you, what you'll want to do is just spin it clockwise. I'm spin it in my finger, but that's making kind of a rope. You don't want it to be a rope either, so I'll spin it back just a little bit to lay it flat, and then I'll keep going. And this is where I need my material clip to hold this tinsel out of the way. So part way up and back, you might have to spin this floss just a couple times to tighten it back up. But again, don't spin it too tight or you will end up with a, you know, a rope that is about the diameter of a thick thread. So you can see that right there. It's a little bit thicker in the back than it is in the front. So I'm going to take one more pass to go down and then back up. And on this one, you can see I'm letting it lay a little flatter and that's by design. I'm trying to even out any of the lumps that I might have gotten from that first pass. So I'm just going back to almost all the way back. And now this last pass going forward, I really want this one to be kind of flat. And if you were lucky and did it right, you'll have a pretty smooth body. But one more thing to do on these two colored floss bodies, you'll need to take a couple of extra wraps right here. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. We can wrap, you know, maybe our first wrap of the black just a little bit over that red. But two wraps should secure this. Let's go ahead and snip this red off. Now, just maybe a couple more wraps forward to where I'm gonna catch in the black. And for the black, we wanna do the exact same thing. But, just take it all the way to the front of the hook. Lick my fingers again, get that a little tighter. Okay, and just pull that right there. And probably the hardest part of this body is getting this smooth between the red and the black. So we'll give it a shot. If you take your time, you can probably get it. And if you've got a little bit of a lump between the red and black, eh, don't worry about it. Okay, now when you've got your black floss back up to the front, go ahead and snip this off. Now a couple of points I wanna make here. Um, don't worry if you've got a little dip between the red and the black, we might be able to cover that with our tinsel. So let's go ahead and secure this floss right there. One other point to make, and don't be scared to take your, your underbody, if it's a floss underbody, all the way up to the eye. I used to stop them a little too early and then I would end up with too big of a head. But if you, you know, just take your floss all the way up to the front, you can always tie in your throat and your wing right on top of that floss. So let's wrap this, this tinsel. The first wrap, right back at the tail. Now, the rest of the wraps, and if you time it just right, you might get one wrap right between the red and the black, and you can hide a couple of imperfections. So just openly spaced 
are evenly spaced, fairly open wraps all the way up. Now I'm going to catch this in with two wraps up here and then take a look at it. It's not too late to back that tinsel off and rewrap it if you didn't get them evenly spaced enough. I think in our case we're fine right there, so I'm going to go ahead and put two more securing wraps right here. That one didn't capture it. That one did. So now our tinsel is locked in. So the next component is our throat. Let's get this straightened back up in the hook again. So for the throat, just black, strong saddle hackle, some of this cheap stuff right here. And pick a feather that is going to have some of these that are still webby. And what I will do is just pull them out perpendicular to the stem. A good, you know, 15 or 20 fibers right here, if you can see that. I got them bunched up and then just pull them off the stem here. And check your tips. Are the tips pretty well aligned? I think so. So how long do we want to make this throat? All the way to the, the point. Maybe just a little bit past the point of the hook even. So going about right there, I'm, I've got the thread hanging about where I want the back of my head to be. So switch hands, do a pinch wrap right here. Let's do two wraps and then check it. That's I'm good on the length right there. And just check to make sure you're coming off the bottom like you want. I think we are. So we can go ahead and a couple more securing wraps right here before we snip off this excess. I think that's going to be fine. Now, probably the hardest part of this fly is getting the right size wings and the right piece of wings. Remember this trick. Take a hook, the same size that you're tying on, put it in your hackle pliers, and then this is a, a dyed black duck quill. If you can see that in the camera, I would just put that in there and then slide it out. That will be the size of the wing I want. So when you get two of these cut from matching slips, a right and left feather, I'm gonna tie this one kind of the English style with the, the wings flaring up. I think that looks just a little bit better. And the example that I'm looking at in this book has them like that. So get your distance just past the bend of the hook and switch your hands. You've got your thread hanging where you want the, the back of your head to be. Do a pinch wrap right here and holding it pretty tight in my material hand while I pull down. And then we'll do a second wrap before we take a look at it. Okay, I think that wing is fine. It's coming off the top like I want, but got to be careful. I've still got some tension on my thread because it will still spin around on you if you're not careful. So I'm going to go ahead and put a good three or four wraps to really lock this in. And now if I'm lucky, that wing will not slide around on me. And I can reach in here and snip off the front of these right here. This might take me a couple of snips because there's just a lot of them. Now what a lot of people will do right here is just singe these, take a lighter or a singeing tool and melt them. I don't because it seems like every time I do, I mess up more of the fly than I, I clean up. So I'll just take my thread right back up to the eye and build this ramp and then bury all these. So it's a wet fly. I don't mind having a, a good size head on my wet flies. So I think that is going to be fine right there. We've got a little bit of scrap fiber on there, but that head is a, is a fine shape. We can go ahead and do the whip finish. And then our UV resin or head cement, however you like to finish your flies to get that nice, clean, hard, glossy look on the head. Snip this thread right there, and if you've got any cleanup, now's the time to do it. I think this one is fine. We don't have too much cleanup right here. So there you go, Watson's Fancy. A very old school winged wet fly, British pattern. Pretty fun to tie, pretty cool looking pattern. So. 
that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.